Hello interested folks and welcome to um, what I hope will be a short video on how I'm doing some asynchronous loading um, without solving the problems that that gives within React. That's going to be possibly the next video. This is just to show you um, quickly building a class to load things using the ES6 promise um, object. So um, this is my um, responsive tour micro app. So these are filters, so you select which filters you want um, and then you get through to a detail page. Um, some minor validation, you can send your inquiry close, it's responsive, and that's what we're working on at the moment. So, space that out a bit. So what I want to do though um, is show you, this is the store, the tour store, that's holding basically, not asynchronously, this is hard-coded, uh, the tour data in there. So as you can see, these are some of the filters that belong so both of these the surf and turf and the classic island tour both have easy going in them so they will display if you select easy going just as an example of the functionality but we want to of course take the take this code out of there and put it into a separate file so i've taken that out i've formatted it to work um, as a JSON file, I've gulped that across so that in the dist folder we have our JSON. So we need to load this in, in short. So how do we go about doing that? Well, I'm going to do that in the store. Uh, it makes sense to me to do it there and until I see a problem with that, that's what I'm going for with this architecture. So um, traditionally, all I'm doing is we're running this get all, which which returns that our tour items. And for whatever reason at the moment, that's running twice. We're getting all of the tours for the filters and all of the tours for the tour list. And so that's something for me to work on later. But for brevity, um, just accept that um, we're calling this twice for the moment. And it returns this dot items. So it returns this, this um, object, which we then move through and display the filters. So, We've got to take that out. So within this, let's try doing our Ajax call here. And to do that, I need another file. And so I started to create within my source, and I made it a component loader. So I based this on the Mozilla um, documentation for um, Promise, and that's quite cool. Um, it's new to ES6, and Babel will pull this code and make it work with browsers and output us the relevant JavaScript for us, which is really handy. So, but in order to do that, we create a namespace. Um, which is encapsulated here, and then export that namespace. So this is something then that Browserify that's set up in this build can hook up to. And so within Tour Store, all I need to do then is require, so this is kind of common JS node style, um, requiring that it, um, what Browserify will do will look through for dependencies and it will output this one big JavaScript file um, and it seems to work really well so um, that's what we're going to do here and so we have we've loaded in this loader um, and what we need to do is to start to engage this loader but let's start to have a look through it so we've got a an overlying function here that returns a method so we can do this from our tool store so where we get all we want to do something like this, or um, we want to at least 
paste to data loader HTTP function so that re and returning us our get method um, and we're going to keep it simple and this would be an API call probably to um, your server or an external server web2 style um, and you might pass other other objects here but we're not going to do that for today because we don't need to um, and that's going to do the following that's going to return us this Ajax we're hard coding it as a get um, in the method um, the URL and the arguments were the, Ur the URL we're passing in as the data tours.json and the arguments we're ignoring for now so we create this promise um, and we're returning the promise which crucially doesn't return the data so what we get at this point is a promise and we need to do uh, dot then and um, if the promise is resolved we go hooray that's a call the Let's create that. So let's function and within that function. So here we get the promise returned, but then, and this is the crucial element, we get data returned, which is what we finally want. So we'll do something like that. And that will happen sometime later. And that's going to break this build. But anyway, let's let's just go with it for the moment because the first part of this is just to look at the promise. Um, so if I go back to... We're still loading in our tools because we're still returning these items here. Um, don't have any errors going on. I'll do that. Yeah, so here we can see um, we've got XHR calls and we're actually loading in our data. And we can see that in the response there. Um, but obviously, we're not doing anything with that yet. I'm doing this, I'm experimenting with getting rid of semicolons as well, guys. Um, that might cause some interest, but yeah, so here we go. Here's our data. Now, it's because it's um, loaded in JSON, that it probably doesn't map the same way as it used to, so um, it, it might do, I'm not sure yet, but um, that error is just about the um, library loading that I've got in the build. It's not related to, uh, to anything that would be in a production environment. Um, so it's pretty much working as expected and um, log. what I would want to do is obviously this is this we can't return anything here it's going to give us a bunch of errors because all of this stuff all of these items need to be there so let's if we turn that off for example we, we can't get length of undefined because it's actually looking for a length of the tours that it's not now loading in. So, and that's going to happen later in this callback, this array. And that's for the next lesson, but this is just about showing um, how you can have a promise. And this is a cut down of, of, of this tutorial here. I'll put that convenience link in the video if I remember. Um, hope that's been useful for some of you and the next video will go on to looking at the, um, the
the the asynchronous nature of that and how React has, along with the dispatch class of Flux, has to has to deal with that differently now that it's not going to be asynchronous. So, hope you enjoyed that and see you next time.